Hello everyone, this is Into the Fray. It is February 27, 2022. And I wanted to do this video. Um, I've been wanting to do it for some time now. I just haven't had the chance to do it. Um, and it's talking about the gathering in unto one place. Um, I do believe that the Lord is going to gather his people together in the last days. Um, during the tribulation and um, I've been doing some prophecy study um, it's a study guide that I've been reading by Earl Curry and um, I'll put that down in the links in the description box but um, the other day I was reading in this book and came across the scripture that I'm going to read to you guys and I was like what wait a minute this goes along with the scripture from the Book of Mormon, um, and it's in the third book of Nephi in chapter 2, where there's this war that breaks out um, because of the Gadianton robbers and uh, the Nephite people. Now, if anybody doesn't know or hasn't seen my video on the Gadianton robbers, I suggest you all go watch it. It's pretty short. I can't remember. It's just like a few minutes long. But um, for anybody that doesn't know the background of this, um, the Gadianton Robbers was a secret society uh, here in America a long, long time ago. And they are basically Satanists, um, you know, just the satanic elite groups that we have today, but they were called the Gadiantons. So... We today know them as Freemasons and, you know, occultists and all that. So that's who was waging war against these people, these other people, this other group of people. And um, so I found it very interesting, all these scriptures that I came across. Um, and I just, I printed this out and I sent it to a friend of mine that I go to church with. And she just literally told me not too long ago, just like 30 minutes ago, that her and her husband both have read, like today her husband read the same scriptures that I have in this, and then she had read the same scriptures a couple of Sundays ago before I had sent this to her. So I was like, wow, you know, this is a confirmation <clears throat> that, you know, the Lord wants this to come forth. Um, and to let people know and warn them. And the Book of Mormon is so full of detail about the Gadiantons and these secret societies that are had throughout all the earth, it tells us. And we know that. We know that it is throughout every nation and, uh, you know, people on this earth. And this is who we, you know, are fighting against, basically. Um... And in the Book of Mormon, it talks about the wars. And this one is so detailed. And um, I'm going to get into it here in a few minutes. You guys are going to see. It's just so, I mean, it's not like, it's kind of just crazy how, you know, all of this coincides together, the wars. Um, I, I really think that this is how it's going to happen and play out here in these last days that we live in. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it now. I'm going to shut up and just start reading. Um, I title this, A Gathering in Unto One Place, A Study of the Gathering of People, the Tribulation, and Warfare Tactics that We Need to Know for These Last Days. So I'm going to start with the Doctrine and Covenants, section 28, verse 2d. Wherefore the decree hath gone forth from the Father, that they shall be gathered in unto one place, upon the face of this land to prepare their hearts and be prepared in all things against the day when tribulation and desolation are sent forth upon the wicked. And I do believe that we are going to be gathered in unto the land of Zion. Uh, all of the Lord's elect, the people that truly follow him and serve him. And uh, here's something that I interjected here. So the next excerpt is about the Gadiantans threatening to come up against the Nephites. I believe this story is how it will play out in our day. We are currently being ruled by Gadiantans, and they are Satanists. They are trying to do away with the true followers of Christ. And we know this because we know that 
this is spiritual warfare um, with the shutting down of the churches. And I have a story about how they shut down our church. Um, not the government, but the people voted in my church to shut it down back in April 2020. Um, and I gave them my testimony and told them that that is what Satan wants them to do. But they didn't listen, and so a lot of them have gotten sick. And they've been going, you know, to the doctors and getting their diagnosis of coronavirus, which we know is not... It's not real, but anyways, I digress. I can get into that another time. But uh, just to start here, Third uh, Nephi chapter two, starting with verse thirteen. And now it came to pass when Laconius received this epistle. So he had received an epistle from Gideon High, who was the leader of the Gadianton secret order, and he had received an epistle from him. He was exceedingly astonished because of the boldness of Gideon High in demanding the possession of the land of the Nephites and also threatening the people in avenging the wrongs of those that had received no wrong, save it were they had wronged themselves by descending away unto those wicked and abominable robbers. Now behold, this Laconius the governor was a just man, and could not be frightened by the demands of the threatenings of a robber. Therefore he did not hearken to the epistle of Gideon High, the governor of the robbers, but he did cause that his people should cry unto the Lord for strength, against the time that the robbers should come down against them. So instead of being afraid, Laconius cried unto the Lord for strength. And I think that's very important to realize. He didn't give in. He wasn't afraid of what these evil Satanists were going to try to do. He asked the Lord for strength. Okay. Verse 17, Yea, he sent a proclamation among all the people that they should gather together their women and their children and their flocks and their herds and all their substance, save it were their land, unto one place. And he caused that fortifications should be built round about them and the strength thereof should be exceeding great. So they, were, they gathered everything that they had except for their land and they all went to one place. I think it's very significant. Um... And I do believe that we are going to have to be gathered together for protection against what is going to happen. <clears throat> and they built fortifications all the way around. And they were exceedingly strong. And that's another point to, uh, that I gathered from this. Um, I think it's very important info. Uh, and he caused that there should be armies, both of the Nephites and the Lamanites, or of all of them who were numbered among the Nephites, because there were two groups of people, the Nephites and the Lamanites, okay? So that's what it's talking about there. Or of all of them who were numbered among the Nephites, should be placed as guards round about to watch them and to guard them from the robbers day and night. So they had people placed guards as or placed as guards all the way around the property that they were at to watch and to guard them both day and night. Uh, yea, he said unto them, As the Lord liveth, except ye repent of all your iniquities, and cry unto the Lord, that they could in no wise be delivered out of the hands of those Gadianton robbers. So fortifications were built around them, and they were strong. They had guards watching day and night, and they not only had to physically prepare, but also spiritually prepare. Laconius warned them that if they would repent, or that they should repent, or else they would not be delivered out of the hands of the Gadiantans. So with verse 21, it says, And so great and marvelous were the words and prophecies of Laconius, that they did cause fear to come upon all the people, and they did exert themselves in their might to do according to the words of Laconius. And it came to pass that Laconius did appoint chief captains over all the armies of the Nephites, to command them at the time that the robbers should come down out of the wilderness against them. Now the chiefest among all the chief captains and the great commander of all the armies of the Nephites was appointed, and his name was Gid Gid and I Gid Gid and I Gid Gid and I I can't say it. Um, now it was the custom among all the Nephites to appoint for their chief captains, save it were in their times of wickedness, someone that had the spirit of revelation and also prophecy, 
Therefore, this Gidgidonite was a great prophet among them and also was the chief judge. Now the people said unto Gidgidonite, Pray unto the Lord, and let us go up upon the mountains and into the wilderness, <clears throat> that we may fall upon the robbers and destroy them in their own lands. But Gidgidonite said it, saith unto them, The Lord forbid, for if we should go up against them, the Lord would deliver us into their hands. So that's also a very important point. You know, let the battle come to you. Don't go out and be looking for a fight or instigating things. Okay, therefore, we will prepare ourselves in the center of our lands, and we will gather all our armies together, and we will not go against them, but we will wait till they shall come against us. Therefore, as the Lord liveth, if we do this, he will deliver them into our hands. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the seventeenth year, in the latter end of the year, the proclamation of Laconius had gone forth throughout all the face of the land. And they had taken their horses and their chariots and their cattle and all their flocks and their herds and their grain and all their substance, and then marched forth by thousands and by tens of thousands until they had all gone forth to the place which had been appointed, that they should gather themselves together to defend themselves against their enemies. And the land which was appointed was the land of Zarahemla, and the land which was between the land of Zarahemla and the land bountiful, yea, to the line which was between the land bountiful and the land desolation. <coughs> And there were a great many thousand people who were called Nephites who did gather themselves together in this land. Now Laconius did cause that they should gather themselves together in the land southward because of the great curse which was upon the land northward, and they did fortify themselves against their enemies. And they did dwell in one land and in one body, and they did fear the words which had been spoken by Laconius insomuch that they did repent of all their sins. And they did put up their prayers unto the Lord their God that he would deliver them in the time that their enemies should come down against them to battle. And they were exceeding sorrowful because of their enemy. And Gidgid and I did cause that they should make weapons of war of every kind, that they should be strong with armor and with shields and with bucklers after the manner of his instructions. And I found that very interesting that they mentioned um, they made all kinds of weapons of war. Um, and that they should have armor, which um, I, I've been listening to my friend Chad Carr's uh, videos on, you know, the invasions that could take place, which will take place. Um, and he's always talking about armor and we need to wear it and stuff. And this verse just like popped out at me. I was like, yep, we're going to need armor. <laughs> so I think... You know, if we pay attention here and apply this, I think it will help us physically and also spiritually because they did have to repent. Okay, let me go on here to verse 39. And it came to pass that in the latter end of the 18th year, those armies of the robbers had prepared for battle and began to come down and to sally forth from the hills and out of the mountains and the wilderness and their strongholds and their secret places. And uh, Chad, he is always talking about the Trojan shock armies, the fifth column, uh, you know, and the secret places. They definitely have the troops, the foreign troops. Um, they have their, you know, artillery and their tanks and everything hidden away. Um, and especially in those barges that they've said, you know, have been out in the ports for so long, all these months, and they haven't been talking about it lately. So, you know, makes you wonder, you know, what do they have? I don't know what I can say in this video that won't get me shut down, but like missiles, you know, on those cargo ships. Uh, it just makes you wonder. Uh, the Gadiantans had secret hideouts much akin to how the foreign troops and the satanic super soldiers do, also known as DOMs, or Deep Underground Military Bases. We have foreign troops already hiding inside the U.S. It's fourth generation warfare. They are waiting for the opportunity to strike. All right, continue with verse 40. And began to take possession of the lands, both which was in the land south and which was in the land north, and began to take possession of all the lands which have been deserted by the Nephites, and cities which have been left desolate. So everything, all the places that the Nephites have lived at before 
They were now desolate, because they had taken everything with them. But behold, there were no bees, wild beasts, nor game in those lands, which had been deserted by the Nephites, and there was no game for the robbers, save it were in the wilderness. And the robbers could not exist, save it were in the wilderness, for the want of food. For the Nephites had left their lands desolate, and had gathered their flocks, and their herds, and all their substance, and they were in one body. And I find it interesting that it keeps repeating that throughout this. Therefore, there was no chance for the robbers to plunder and to obtain food, save it were to come up in open battle against the Nephites. And the Nephites, being in one body, and having so great a number, and having reserved for themselves provisions in horses and cattle and flocks of every kind, that they might subsist for the space of seven years. And I find that very interesting, um, because we know you know, tribulation. I know some people say oh, it's going to be three and a half years. Some people say it's seven. Um, so I find that very interesting that they mention this here, that they had all kinds of provisions and um, animals so that they could sustain themselves for seven years. Uh, you know, like, what should we be doing? Oh, dear. What did I do? I went to went backwards somehow. Hold on here. And so, there we go. And it came to pass in the 19th year, Gideon High found that it was expedient that he should go up to battle against the Nephites. For there was no way that they could subsist, save it were to plunder and rob and murder. And they durst not spread themselves upon the face of the land, insomuch that they could raise grain, lest the Nephites should come upon them and slay them. Therefore, Gideon High gave commandment unto his armies that in this year they should go up to battle against the Nephites. And it came to pass that they had come up to battle, and it was in the sixth month, and behold, great and terrible was the day that they did come up to battle. And they were girded about after the manner of robbers, and they had a lamb skin upon their loins, and they were dyed in blood, and their heads were shorn, and they had head plates upon them. And great and terrible was the appearance of the armies of Gideon High because of their armor, and because of their being dyed in blood. And it came to pass that the armies of the Nephites when they saw the appearance of the army of Gideon High, had all fallen to the earth, and did lift their cries to the Lord their God, that he would spare them and deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. And it came to pass that when the armies of Gideon High saw this, they began to shout with a loud voice because of their joy, for they had supposed that the Nephites had fallen with fear because of the terror of their armies. But in this thing they were disappointed, for the Nephites did not fear them, but they did fear their God, and did supplicate him for protection. Therefore, when... The armies of Gideon High did rush upon them. They were prepared to meet them. Yea, in the strength of the Lord, they did receive them. And the battle commenced, and this is six months. And great and terrible was the battle thereof. Yea, great and terrible was the slaughter thereof. Insomuch that there never was known so great a slaughter among all the people of Lehi since he left Jerusalem. And notwithstanding the threatenings and the oaths which Gideon High had made, behold, Nephites did beat them, insomuch that they did fall back from before them. And so what I have written here is the Nephites had enough food for seven years. This is very important. They were prepared and they were at an advantage because of being together inside the fortified land. Uh, the Nephites had armor, which we may need also. I think we will. It is important to see that as they prepared not only physically, but also spiritually and were in a state of repentance, the Lord gave them his strength to come up to battle against the Gadiantans. And so I have several other references um, and uh, regarding the gathering and the people and Zion. Um, I'm going to start here, Genesis 7:23. And the Lord called his people Zion because they were of one heart and of one mind and dwelt in righteousness, and there were no poor among them. Jeremiah 32:39 says, And I will give them one heart in one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them. And of their children after them. Um, and I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. Ezekiel eleven nineteen. Uh, Acts four thirty two says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Um Second Nephi 136 from the Book of Mormon. Arise from the dust, my sons, and be men, 
and be determined in one mind and in one heart, united in all things, that you may not come down into captivity, that you may be cursed with a sore cursing, or that you be, may not be cursed with a sore cursing. Doctrine and Covenants 36 to H says, And the Lord called his people Zion because of they were of one heart and one mind and dwelt in righteousness. And then um, here, I uh, found this verse in Genesis 1.13. Um, it might be different in King James Version, but this is what it says. And I, God, called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called I the sea. And so, in the book of Revelation, chapter 15, verse 2, the sea is symbolic of nations, people, and languages. Perhaps this verse from Genesis is symbolic of the gathering in of God's people. Um, why does it keep doing that? Yes, honey. Um, let's see. Um, Matthew 24, verses 28 and 40, talks about the gathering in of the people together. And, uh, oh yes, Isaiah 40, 11 says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those who are, or that are with young. And Isaiah 54, 7 says, For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Um, and Jeremiah 31, 10 says, Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. Um, a couple other verses are from Zechariah, or Zechariah 8, the intro. It says, in the last days, Jerusalem shall be restored, Judah shall be gathered, and the Lord will bless his people beyond anything of the past. I find these promises so um, uplifting and um, just encouraging and comforting. Um, and then, so I mentioned Matthew 24, verses 28 and 40. Um, 35, 4, 58, For the Son of Man shall come, and he shall send his angels before him with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together the remainder of his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Um, Doctrine and Covenants 28.1a says, Listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins, who will gather his people, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many as will hearken to my voice, and humble themselves before me, and call upon me in mighty prayer. Um, Doctrine and Covenants 28.2c says, And as it is written, Whatsoever ye shall ask in faith, being united in prayer, according to my command, ye shall receive. And ye are called to bring it to pass the gathering of mine elect, for mine elect hear my voice, and harden not their hearts. And then we have Doctrine and Covenants 45.6c, Doctrine and Covenants 45.12c, and Doctrine and Covenants 45.13b. Just talking about the gathering together of the people. Um, so um, that's all that I wrote. Um, but throughout the scriptures, there's evidence that there will be a gathering together of God's elect people, those that are sanctified and that are true followers of him and that repent, that are truly repentant. You know, I feel like the Lord... He provided Noah an ark to be protected from the flood, and I feel like the Lord has provided us a way to protect us from the tribulation. But it's not to say that we won't go through hard times or face trials and, you know, even be killed for his name's sake, because he tells us that we will be. But I believe he has, he has a way for us to gather together and to be in Zion and to be his people that he's called us to be. So with that, um, I'll leave some links down in the description box and I appreciate you guys for watching and for subscribing to my channel and I hope you all have a blessed day and a blessed week and I will see you guys in the next video.